guess who's here to play Mario Kart? I brought my controller. That's a cheap wired PS3 controller, and I'm already playing something. What are you playing? Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 3DS. Bowser just got f***ed by Peach. Well, if we're not gonna play Mario Kart, what can I play? I don't know, I've got other games over there. Go look. Can I? Whatever. Huh? What's this? Badland Wonder World? That's a good question. I found it outside in my yard last night. What is this, Night to the Dreams? You don't just find games outside, you purchase them outside. Easy for you to say, isn't it? Oh god, it's horrifying! Batland Wonderworld, the Nights in the Dream sequel that's never going to be a Nights in the Dream sequel because it can't qualify as anything else but bathroom garbage. I'm a bit of a masochist when it comes to buying bad games. I have James Cameron's Avatar the game for the Wii to prove it. But Batland Wonderworld feels like an entirely different beast, almost like there's something wrong with it. I get this weird feeling every time I look at it on my shelf, almost like it's staring back at me like it's possessed or something. But I'm sure it's just my imagination and I'm probably just crazy, so why not give the game a shot? I've got nothing else going on. I never want to touch that game again. Before I dive into the nitty gritty, I need to know what is a Batland Wonderworld and how did it come to be? Well, according to my good friend Wikipedia, Batland Wonderworld is a 3D platformer developed by Arzest and Batland Company, with lead director Yuji Naka on the case. Everyone knows Yuji Naka, the man behind most Sonic games, Nights in the Dreams, Probe, and more recently working with Square Enix alongside Naoto Oshima to bring whatever Batland Wonderworld is to life, which is cool. But you could have published it with Sega as well. This looks like it'd be up their alley. They made this after all. Well, I guess the only thing we can do is put the game in and give it a shot. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, what are you waiting for? Start the game. It has to install. In what? Alright, the game's finally done installing, so it's time to see what a Balan Wonder World is. Why is it taking so long? I don't know. All right, we're off to a good start here. 20 seconds later and I can finally do something. One little thing I noticed about the language select screen here is it says you can press one of the four face buttons to make your selection. And I find that kind of odd because it's mapped to all four buttons instead of just one or two, but I'm sure it's only for this one little portion of the game. It was not for that one little portion of the game. What, does it give us an option to change the controls? No. Well, that's weird. Maybe it'll get better once we actually start the game. Yeah, you may be right. Getting into the game now, we have an option to choose one of two characters with different appearances. Leo Craig and Emma Cole. I went with Emma Cole because who else was I going to go with? Leo Craig? I think them managing to do something like Pokemon where you're not necessarily creating a character but are choosing one of multiple different versions of said character to fit your style seems like they're really trying to get me invested here and I'm interested to see what they do. Alright, now we have to choose a character. Ooh, go with Leo Craig. You've got to go with Leo Craig. Why? He has the same name as my cousin. Your last name is Craig? No, my last name is Biker. Yeah, I'm feeling more up to Emma Cole, honestly. She has a similar hairstyle to Saturn. Emma's story begins with her walking out of her room and seeing two maids talking to one another about God knows what. You then come to find out that Emma seems to be suffering from anxiety, worrying about what the other maids may be saying about her, so she leaves. Herself alongside Leo Craig are then drawn to this weird looking building in an alley called Balan Wonderworld. The building is titled the name of the game? Shh, I want to see what happens next! Upon entering the building, they meet this creature known as Balan, who promises to help both Leo and Emma find their heart, which I'm assuming means overcoming their struggles. In the midst of saying that, he puts on a nice show for them, then transports them into the world of the game. I've gotta be honest here, these are some pretty damn good looking cutscenes, like they almost look Pixar quality, if not better at times. Like the animation quality here is really fluid and smooth, you can tell they put a lot of care into making this look as good as possible. Now I'm really getting interested. If they put this much care and effort into the animation quality and visuals, then I'm sure the gameplay is gonna be heavenly. What the f*** is this? Oh god, it reeks! 
Not only does the gameplay portion not look as good as the cutscenes, but it also has the same control layout as the menus, it triggers included. Damn near every button does the exact same thing, with the minor exclusion being the touchpad, d-pad, and shoulder buttons. Her running feels both stiff and slippery at the same time and her jump hardly has any weight to it. Oh my god! And maybe it'll get better once I start the first chapter. What is happening? I don't know. Getting into the first chapter, this is where the real gameplay really shines, and of course I'm lying because <laughs> nothing's really changed. The way the chapters are set up here is you have two levels in the boss fight centered around other people's problems. For example, chapter 1 has you helping a depressed farmer after his crops have been destroyed by a tornado, or chapter 2 where you're helping a scuba diver who seems to be afraid of dolphins. Now that's cool and all, but why are we helping random people deal with their issues when we're supposed to be dealing with our own issues? In fact, isn't that the entire reason Balan is here in the first place? To help Emma Cole overcome her anxiety? It just doesn't make much sense to me looking at this from a writing perspective. You have the main character, which in my case is Emma Cole, dealing with anxiety, so you set up the premise at the beginning of the game promising to help her overcome her issues. That's a pretty damn good baseline for a simple story. So why are we helping random people instead of ourselves? I'm no stranger when it comes to writing, alright? It was my best subject back in elementary school, so I'm pretty confident when saying the entire game doesn't really feel coherent or consistent, it just feels convoluted. It would have made so much sense if you could see Emma gradually get over her anxiety with each chapter cleared, or if you wanted to have all of these random people so bad, have them help Emma instead of Emma helping them. Alright, we got the first power up in the game, let's see what it can do! I don't say anything. Let's just keep playing and see where this goes. So there are power-ups in these levels, all having different abilities to enhance as well as enrich the gameplay experience with all new control schemes. Do I sound believable yet? They control exactly the same as the rest of the game. Only slight difference is you'll have the option to hold down the button for some of them instead of just pressing it. You know how in Mario games when you get a power-up and it changes the sprint button into an attack button for some of them? Why couldn't we get something similar? It would have been fine with just one button doing something different, like an attack or something, anything, but instead, damn near every button does the same action. Hey look, we got a golden statue! <laughs> what, is this supposed to be the collectible of the game? I don't know, but doesn't it seem odd that we've already cleared the first chapter and there are no more chapters in the game? Yeah, that is weird. It, maybe the manual will have more information. No, there is no manual here. Case is completely empty. What are you talking about? I saw it in there when I found it last night. No, there's really nothing here. Look. Okay, this is getting weird. At first we can't change the controls, then we clear the first chapter but don't have any of the others available, and now I just realized we don't have any of the other golden statues. The power-ups are primarily used to get around the levels easier with each level having a different set of them. You can only hold three at a time and switch between them using the bumpers and you're gonna have to do this quite often in order to kill enemies and find some of those golden statues. And the power-ups themselves are fine for the most part, they just don't really do much besides only one action and if you really want to collect all the golden statues, you're gonna be doing a lot of backtracking later on in the game when you unlock more of these things. And that leaves me asking, why? That's just forcing replayability, which isn't bad if it's done in a more fun creative way, but this game doesn't really feel that creative and I damn sure ain't having much fun. Look at something like Super Mario 3D World for instance. You don't need to play as the other characters to grab all the green stars and yellow flagpoles. Hell, you don't even need to do it for most of the stamps aside from the character specific buttons in certain levels, which I should also point out is very few in comparison to the rest of the game. Here, if I want to climb this spider web in chapter 1 for instance, I would have to go all the way to chapter 3 to get the spider power up, go back to chapter 1, climb the web, grab the golden statue, then go back to continue where I left off. Do you see where the questioning comes from now? This isn't interesting or creative, it's just tedious. There is another way to collect golden statues, and that's done through Balan's Belt. You would trigger these by finding one of multiple golden hats spread throughout a majority of the levels. Some have multiple, others have just one. They're not anything special, just interactive cutscenes where you're pressing X at the right time to match Balan up with his after images. I should also point out that in order to actually get the golden statue, you need to get an excellent on all of the after image sequences, so if you mess up even once, yeah, you're not getting it. Alright, that's chapter 8 done. This game is pretty damn easy. Though I don't really get why they keep using the same musical number after every boss fight. Maybe they ran out of the budget. 
Hiring singers to make music in a non-existent language costs money, you know. You almost sound like you like the game. Hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I'm just saying. Let's just finish this. What the fuck? Fuck! We were almost fucking done! Did you actually want to finish this? Yes! It was physical! Well, what are we gonna do now? Did you do that? What are you talking about? Did you just eject the disc? No. I've been admiring your copy of Wii Sports. Did you know they used to put this in sleeves? It was probably just my imagination then. Let's just try to restart the game and continue where we left off. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, wasn't your copy of Badland Wonderworld by the TV? How'd it get over there? That's a good question. None of us moved it over there. It's gone! The smoke detector! How the hell did it get all the way up there? I don't know, but this is getting really weird. Hmm. Ah! Are you okay? No, the game just hit me! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Is it done? I'm out! Don't leave me here alone! Alright, I think we've gone far enough. What the hell was that? I don't know, you found it last night. Yeah, well I didn't know the game was gonna be possessed. Well, that's why you don't find games outside, you buy them. Look, we're getting off topic here. What are we gonna do about this thing? I got it! You had a gun this whole time? Why didn't you shoot it back at my house? I didn't want to ruin the carpet. Whatever, that's not important. Stay sharp. He could be out here anywhere. Oh, shit! F this. I know exactly what to do with this. Hey, hey, look who's got a new copy of Battle and Wonder World from GameStop. Now we can finally finish it. Get, get the fuck out. <laughs> 